Welcome to the driver's meeting for the June Jamboree in Albany, Oregon. I'm Keto. And I'm Katie. This driver's meeting consists of two parts. The first part is us talking to you for a few minutes about what you need to know for the event. The second part is linked in the description of the video, which is uh, how to read rally cross cones. So whether you are new or experienced, give that a watch. We just want to be sure that everyone knows how the course is laid out and how to read the cones. Um, let's see. So this event is a two-day event. So uh, your class will race either on Saturday or Sunday. If you signed up for fun runs, your fun runs, which are just non, non-competition runs, will be the opposite day. So if you race Saturday, fun run Sunday. If you race Sunday, then fun runs are Saturday. The course will be different both days, so there's not an unfair advantage to, to doing fun runs the day before. When you show up, you'll be asked to sign a waiver at the gate. We'll give you a wristband when you sign the waiver, and it is $10. The venue charges $10 to enter, um, cash only. They don't take card. Um, wear your wristband all weekend long. That way you don't have to sign again, and you don't have to pay again if you leave and come back. Um, once you are through the gate, you're signed all the things. Uh, go ahead and find parking. This is a great venue for camping. So if you're going to camp, get your area all set up um, and then get your car ready for a tech inspection. You want to talk about what happens at tech inspection? Sure. So when you bring your car up for a uh, tech inspection, please have it as um, you would when um, you're racing. So make sure that the car is empty. Also, make sure you bring your helmets up there because they're going to need to be checked also. Um, make sure that you have your numbers on there and uh, sponsor stickers. Um, and then um, you know, the mechanical. So the mechanical end of it, <clears throat> we go around, we check, make sure that you don't have uh, like loose ball joints or wheel bearings. Um, check, make sure you have brake pedal. A uh, big thing that gets missed is the positive terminal on the battery needs to be covered. Uh, that's a safety issue. Um, and then we just make sure that you have all your other safety stuff like seat belts and that your windows are there, all that sort of stuff. Um, <clears throat> covered that's numbers. It. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. It. yeah. So um, come, if you haven't raced with us before, pop over to tech inspection before you bring your car through and just mm -hmm. grab sponsor stickers. We'll have a couple couple stickers for you to run on your car. They are required. We do check them at tech inspection yes. and just a word about numbers, two things. One, they need to be visible, clear, contrasting color of the right size. All of that is That's linked right. in the rules. So please be sure to take a look at the rules. But the second thing is if you are a dual driver, you are required to alternate numbers each time you run. So driver one runs their number, driver two runs their number. It's really important that you have a, a way to switch those in between runs because yep. that's how we assign your time to you. Yep. So if you forget to change them, we assign the time to the wrong person yep. and that's we, we can't keep track of that. So that's what you And also make sure that your numbers stay clean throughout the day, especially people who put their numbers like lower down on the door. Um, you get a lot of roofs off of the front wheel. So just, you know, make sure it's visible. It is required that we can read the numbers on your vehicle. Yep. And that's up to that, that requirements on you. Yep. So we give you 90 minutes to show up, get your car ready for tech inspection, to go through tech inspection, and to walk the course. So be sure to plan your time accordingly. Look at when gates open. Look at when tech inspection opens. Look at when it closes. Just so you are sure to get everything done in that amount of time. It's plenty of time as long as you plan ahead. Um, course walking is really important. It gives you a, a view of the course before you race it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're rushing through and you don't have time, you know, it's not super helpful. So just be sure, give yourself enough time and please don't show up when tech inspection is closed and expect your car to be teched um, at that point that staff has moved on to something else. And it's really tough to try and like spin that back up and get you through. So mm -hmm. you get through tech, you walk the course. Oh, I missed a step. You get checked in. Mm -hmm. uh, when you come through tech inspection, then you go to check in. We'll ask us to your driver's license. Make sure you have a valid license that is required. We will confirm your class and your number. So just be prepared to check those check in and provide those. Mm -hmm. And then you can park your car and walk the course. Like I said, be sure you have enough time for that. And then um, please read through the schedule. Know when you're expected back at the timing tent, we are going to have a driver's meeting, an in-person driver's meeting before mm -hmm. the race starts. Mm -hmm. um, we just want to be sure that um, we go through any specific information for this race specifically, very specific. I said that twice now. 
Um, and then uh, we'll take time and walk through a few things, just safety things, that sort of thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, once you are ready to race, you will line up at the line. You will get one parade lap. So slow speed, you get to see the course. Mm -hmm. uh, no Scott. You should give your uh, safety during the parade lap talk. Uh, yeah. So uh, for the parade lap, it is a slow drive of the course. Um, big thing is, is this isn't an opportunity for you to test the course. So this isn't a spot for you to make the car slide or anything like that. Um, uh, we do drive slow, so you aren't required to wear a helmet, for example. Um, but, you know, again, keep the shenanigans to zero. Um, and yeah, then you can do it once you go hot. This is a zero shenanigan part of the day. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, yeah. So uh, you will do the parade lap and then we will um, do do the racing. Um, the course is marked out. <laughs> the course is marked out with cones. Yes. Um, each lap is a total of your time on that lap plus any penalties incurred when you hit or miss a cone. Right. Again, watch the video so you know what we're talking right. about. And all the times count. It's, a, it's a cumulative. Um, it is cumulative and no at the end, of, no that? toss out, no throw outs, no throwaway mm -hmm. runs. Yeah. Um, and you can check your times. We'll have local Wi-Fi for mm -hmm. you to check your times. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's time to race. You're at the line. Mm -hmm. What do they need to know? Well, first thing you need to have your helmet on. You need to have your chin strap, um, all done up as well. You need to have your seat belts on. Um, you also need to have your window rolled up, at least on the driver's side. You're allowed a gap that is one inch. Um, if you have a, a passenger, then their window also needs to be up. One inch gap is the maximum that's allowed. They also need to have a seat belt and helmet, same as you do. Um, and then no one is to be holding in their hands um, a phone or a camera or anything else that can get loose. Um, you are allowed to have um, a camera mount or a phone mount that's sturdy that you can um, record if that's what you want to do, but no one holding it. And anyways, the bouncy videos are really annoying, So, but none of it. Yep. If you are out on course and the passenger in your vehicle is holding a phone or a camera and someone sees it, we will red flag you. We yep. will bring you to a stop. It's unsafe. Uh, but you as the driver, it's your responsibility to know that and That's to right. manage your cockpit. So That's right. And so then you will be given a DNF for that run for that. So it's also um, very prudent for you to keep somebody from holding the phone while they're while you're racing, unless you want to come in last. Um, let's say you're driving along. Mm -hmm. and you see a cone down on course, what can you do? Well, you have two choices here. You can just ignore it as if it doesn't exist, um, drive past it, through it, whatever. Um, or you can uh, come to a stop, point to it. Once you have the attention of the course worker, you point it to it, get back on your pony or somebody behind you coming fast. Um, so, you know, you should drive the course, uh, the rest of the course at race speed or near race speed. Um, and then uh, we will give you a rerun if you stopped and pointed to it. If you did not stop and you just kept going and then at the end of the run decided that you want to rerun, that's too late. Um, but, you know, the cone down is going to count against you. So generally that means there's a bit of a shortcut and an opportunity to make time. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you. You can stop but, or make time. So it's yep. your choice. Yep. Um, what if you're out there driving and you see a red flag. Well, you come to a stop as quickly as you can in a safe manner. No need to go skidding off the course. Um, and then you wait for a course worker to come up and give you direction. They're gonna be on the radio with us once we deal with whatever the issue is. Um, then secondarily, we will give some instructions for cars uh, to get back for reruns. Um, sometimes it'll mean just driving the rest of the course of parade or going to a certain spot will shortcut you and get you off the course back to grid or whatever. Just listen for the directions. Most important thing is come to the stop. Once you're stopped, you know, you're no longer, you know, a threat to anybody. Yes. No, seriously. I mean, if you come up on an accident and you're yeah. driving, it's, it's it could be danger. Yeah. We might red flag you because you're catching the car in front. So mm -hmm. if we stop you, then you can continue safely. Yes. Uh, but sometimes you are the cause of the red flag because 
you have what's called a DB. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes you knock the tire off of the rim, let the air out. And so that is, you know, a concern with cars rolling over and so forth. So we red flag you. So um, we're going to get you off course. Um, and then you have 10 minutes to fix it um, and get back and uh, get a rerun. You get one rerun. If you knock your tire off again, uh, it's just going to count as a DNF going forward. So I would suggest maybe adding a little more tire pressure if you knocked it off once. Um, and that's it. Yeah, if you get a if you DB, that leaves your rim exposed. And so what we have you do is actually drive around the finish trigger instead of mm -hmm. driving over it because you'll cut it. Yep. So don't be alarmed as as you get to the finish, someone sort of waves you around it. Yeah, that, we'll usually try and avoid and shortcut you out of there anyway, so that you're not driving very far on a flat. Mm -hmm. yeah. And every driver is given one 10 minute timeout. Some people call it a mechanical, yep. which if you got a DB, you will use it for yep. that. But yep. otherwise, talk about the 10 minutes. Yeah, you can use it for any reason uh, whatsoever, you know. Um, so um, you get to, to use it. You have to tell um, the head of grid um, or timing that you're taking the 10 minute and that 10 minute starts from when you're supposed to be at the line. Um, so um, we'll keep track of it. It's up to you. We're not going to come and find you and say your 10 minutes are almost up. Uh, when your 10 minutes expires, it's, it expires. Um, and so does your opportunity at that point. But it's up to you to track it. Um, so, um, you know, and again, you get to use it for whatever reason. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you need to change tires, mm -hmm. fill up your tire pressure, you got yep. a mechanical issue, you yep. just need a minute, whatever yep. it might be. And uh, we'll start a timer. And like you said, just keep track on your own so that you're back yep. in time. Yep. Yep. It's your responsibility that 10 minutes, you know, all our clocks work the same. Um, so that's all the, that's all the racing things to know about, but that's only half your day. So what will happen is that you, uh, if you race in the morning, mm -hmm. we'll take a lunch break and then you have a work assignment in the afternoon. Uh, you may have a work assignment in the morning. We'll take the lunch break and then you race in the afternoon. So that just depends on your run group. But nonetheless, when it is time for your work assignment, show up at the timing tent. Mm -hmm. uh, we are adding a new step to our events. You must check in for your work assignment. So work assignments are required. If you do not do your work assignment, you are not allowed to race in the future uh, and you'll be disqualified for that event. So please be sure you come for your work assignment. We will check you in, make sure you're present. We'll send you out to your work station. Um, you are required to wear an orange vest just for safety. So you don't get run over. It's very no other color, no other color, yeah. just orange. And we provide orange vests. You don't need to bring one. Mm -hmm. Um, we require that you are on your feet at all times. Um, you know, sitting on course, unless we have specifically radioed out to everyone that we are taking like a tractor break or something like that. So be on your mm -hmm. feet. That's a safety issue. Mm -hmm. We ask that you keep your eyes on the cars at all times. So watch them go through mm -hmm. your area so mm -hmm. that if anything happens, you are ready. You can react quickly. Right. So don't have your back facing to a car. You know, sometimes there's like a hairpin and they'll come in facing one way and come out facing another. Just go ahead and rotate with the car so that you have eyes on them. You know, you don't ever want your back facing to the cars. Yep. And so each corner or each station has a set of cones that they're responsible for. Each station will have a captain. That captain will have a radio, a red flag, and a fire extinguisher. They're sort of in charge. So work with your captain to understand where your cones start and your cones end. Your responsibility is twofold, maybe threefold. We'll find out. First part is making sure that they remain in the same place throughout the duration of the session. So let's just say we have a slalom. The cones are placed a certain distance apart. If you aren't paying attention and they get put back farther and farther apart, that actually opens up the course, allows cars to go faster, and it become un becomes unsafe. So your job is to make sure that you know exactly where your cones go. So we recommend using like a rock off course as like a visual marker. You can pace out the distance between cones with your with your legs. You can just count the steps, mm -hmm. um, but just make sure you know your cones. You have a handle on them. That's thing one. Mm -hmm. Thing two is as cars come through, you watch them come through. If they hit a cone, you be sure to give those cones you don't give them to anyone. You put them back mm -hmm. where they were, and then you signal to your captain what the penalty was, and they will radio it in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, oftentimes what you can do is, you know, the cone that's down, you pick it up, hold it up over your head, and then set it back into place. And then that tells the captain that that's, that's one of the cones. Mm -hmm. If there's multiples, you can just do it for each one of them. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, be sure that you are paying attention to the course. If you feel like you cannot get a cone safely 
get to the cone and get it back in place safely before the next car comes. Don't leave it and then get it as the next car goes by. For example, if somebody takes out a whole bunch of cones, it might take you a minute to get those all cleaned up. That's okay. We would rather preserve your health and livelihood than get cones back in place. Um, captains will communicate to us if maybe cars are too close together as well. We need to we need to work on that. If you are a captain, uh, you'll have a radio. Your responsibility is to have that radio on you and turned up so you can hear it. We might give instructions over the radio. Uh, you will also be responsible for radioing and the penalties. So if somebody hits a cone, you will say, Tom one, car one, two, three, one cone. And then you wait for a confirmation back from timing just to make sure they heard it. Um, be sure you're waiting for clear airwaves. Don't talk over anyone because if you push down that button, everything goes silent. No one can hear anything. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like I said, just be sure you hear a confirmation so that um, you're sure that we heard it. What happens if you are a captain and you hear a red flag call? What should you do? Uh, for your course, for yeah. your corner, yeah. um, you should have the red flag already on your person. Um, you should get it out there and you should wave it in a manner which is going to catch their attention, but not in such a way that puts yourself in danger, mm -hmm. i.e. wave it vigorously from the side where they're going to see you. Don't jump in front of them. Yeah. Um, we've had incidences where the captain does not have the red flag on mm -hmm. them. And mm -hmm. what happens is they hear the red flag call. They have to run back to their bucket, get the flag, and then get out on course. Yeah, and by then the car's the car gone. gone by. Yep. yep. So just be yep. sure you have it with you. you tuck it in your pocket, whatever it might be. Yeah. Yeah. Just make sure you're not using it to point things out to people. <laughs> that has happened too. And so then somebody comes to a stop on course, like, oh, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, just, you know, make sure you keep it furled, you know, on your person. Yep. And, um, yeah. If you need to call a red flag, let's say you see a D-bead, a car coming towards you has a D-bead. What you need to do is you need to radio to us. Com3, red flag, I have a D-bead, Com3, red flag, right? Be very clear, but quick, because mm -hmm. what we will then do if we hear your call we will then immediately communicate to all the comm stations. Because right. for example, if it's mm -hmm. just something at comm one, that's the first station on the course, mm -hmm. we don't have to red flag the whole course. We just let everybody else keep racing mm -hmm. and we'll just hold your comm station. And so if you say comm one, red flag, I have a DB, right. we're going to make sure you bring that car to a stop and we're going to let everybody keep racing. Yep, that's that right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. But you know, if you are at like, say, comm three mm -hmm. and there is a car behind you, we'll ask one and two to mm -hmm. jump on a flag, but we'll leave open you mm -hmm. know four five and six you yep. know so cars can finish so you don't have to worry about any of that your responsibility mm -hmm. is just to quickly and succinctly communicate what's happening mm -hmm. what's really challenging is if someone says come three red flag and that's all we hear we don't know what the situation is we don't know what we're dealing with and we don't know how to manage the course so give us a little bit more information yeah. come three red flag i have a car catching another car perfect mm -hmm. information yeah okay. last thing about your work assignment is that um you need to be prepared for for the work and for the elements so Right now, the time of this taping looks like it's going to be in the mid 70s and partly sunny. So be sure you have water, be sure you wear sunscreen, be sure you have a hat, whatever it is you need to be comfortable standing out there for a couple of hours. Um, we, we just want to be sure you're safe and healthy and all the things. Now, if the forecast changes and let's say it's going to rain, be sure you bring a raincoat and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lastly, this course has hoses along the course so that we can manage watering throughout the day to keep the dust down mm -hmm. you want to give the workers a little yeah so if we too? if we do end up having to water um what we will do is there's a main pump we'll kick on i'll handle that and then we'll water um a couple of uh stations at a time um so um there's just hoses. It's a lot like we've done at Hannigan before, and I think we've done it before at uh, Albany, mm -hmm. and we just have to kick the hoses on and, you know, water the track surface. We're not trying to douse it and flood it, uh, but just, you know, get it wet and reduce the dust. Yep. So yes. just a nice single layer of water, no puddles. Nobody yeah. wants any soup out there. Your yeah. um fellow racers will have a word yep. for you and then, you yep and then we'll shut down and move on to the next ones until we get around the course yep so that's everything uh except for a few housekeeping items first 
this venue is very spectator friendly. It's very family friendly. There's lots of great places to watch from. Bring your friend, friends, family, dogs, whatever it might be. Yeah. Dogs must be on a leash. You must pick up after them. Please don't leave a mess. Yeah. Just generally, if you see anything on the ground, pick it up, yep. throw it away. Yep. Let's leave the venue cleaner than we yeah. left it. You know, some motocross tracks. There'll be a lot of tear offs and stuff like that. Let's just, just let's just pick it up and get it in the garbage. Yep. Let's leave the place cleaner than we found it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we really encourage camping at this venue. Like I said earlier, it's a great venue for camping. It's big, it's open, it's flat. Yeah, um, electricity. They do have electricity, but lodging's really expensive around there right now. Um, yeah. We looked it up. There's a graduation at the university university nearby. So especially Friday night is super spendy. Um, so take advantage, camp on the property. It's really close. You're only five minutes from the oh, city yeah. of Albany. And so there's plenty of stuff nearby. Um, so come join us yep. um all the things if you have any questions find your competitor email which is probably where you got this video link um be sure you read through it it's your responsibility to know the schedule there's a link to the rules helpful articles packing list all the things if after that you still have questions please send us an email you can reply back to the one we sent it's info at nwrallyassociation.com yep. be sure you try and email us before end of day thursday once we start traveling, we're down at the venue setting up. It's going to be really hard to get back to you in a timely manner. So just do a little pre-planning so that we can help you out if we need to. Yep. So anything else? That's it. All right. Thank you, everyone. We will see you all this weekend in Albany.